What is up, Internet Land? Zachmus Prime, aka Zachmus Prime, here with another Transformers third party review. And today we're taking a look at another oldie but a goodie. This is the Toy World Unearth, which clearly is not a uh, scavenger at all, but you know, just kind of looks like him for coincidental reasons, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, so this is, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty certain that everybody who wants this figure by now has probably got one, but I'm just continuing my, uh, my deep dive into it because I freaking love these figures and I've never reviewed them. But yeah, so, um, this is their take on Scavenger. Scavenger has, al has always been kind of my favorite of the of the Constructicons, and um, I feel that they did it really well. The uh, the little uh, backhoe doesn't quite fold away as nice as maybe like hmm. I'm trying to think now exactly how the uh, if I can remember precisely how the uh, the OG. Uh, TFC version folded away, but I don't know. It's there, but it's not obnoxious. Of course, you can always pull this out and operate it like a third leg if you want some, like, super stable um, poses and whatnot. But it's balanced well enough that I don't have any problem with that. This is kind of a spoiler for uh, alt mode, but I just love that shit. So nice. So good. So good. I love stuff like that. I love stuff like this. Even though this is like the silliest little gimmick. I love that. But anyhow. So yeah, let's talk about his accessories. So he comes with a weapon. Um, this is just like, I mean, it's not the same sculpt. Um, they all have different sculpts for their weapons, but... It's got the same 5mm peg with a slot in it. It attaches to his uh, tabbed hand just like just like everybody's weapon in this team. Come on. Go, go, go. There you go. And it looks good doing it. Oh. And he falls over. As I was talking about the stability of the figure. It also comes with a, uh, a huge friggin' hand. But we'll talk about that later. But yeah, I dig it a whole lot. A whole freaking lot. Yeah, when I was a kid, I had a bunch of hand-me-down Transformers, but um, the very first figure that I ever bought with my own money was a G2 Scavenger, and I had intended on getting the whole collection, the whole set, but I just never had that much allowance when I was growing up, and so I only ever had the one. Well, I mean, I did have a Bone Crusher as well, um, but he was a G1 Bone Crusher, and like I said, a hand-me-down, but... um. Yeah, so, but anyhow, let's talk about his articulation. So his head is on the same sort of um, dual hinge system. You got a hinge here. His head looks down, really not at all. Looks up quite a bit. Rotates just fine. He's got the light piping crap, which again, if it works, it works. But like. feel like some paint would have done that really well. So like a little bit of like metallic paint would have really been good there. His shoulders will go out this far. They'll go around this joint here. He's got a bicep swivel, double jointed elbow. 
He's got this transformation joint doesn't seem to like tab in, but you know what? Uh, the little bit of motion there, I'm not gonna, it's not technically a joint, but I'll call it. He's got a wrist swivel, which is fighting me probably because it's an old figure. He's got a wrist swivel, and then each of his five fingers is independently on a uh, little ball joint. No waist joint for this guy, unless I'm... No, I was mistaken. Did the last guy have a waist joint and I didn't know about it? He's got a waist joint, though. How gnarly. Uh, legs are on ball joints, so they'll go that far forward, that far back, go out for <laughs> basically nothing. A little bit of swivel on that ball joint. Plus, you've got... You do have a thigh swivel joint in here. These legs are actually the exact same sculpts with the treads and everything as um, as shovel shovels. Yeah, as bone crushers. Um, so they do technically have a waist joint in there, but these tracks don't really twist. You can tilt the foot forward and back, and then you've got a hinge on the toe and the heel. So, I mean, legs are a little bit limited, but I do like that they have the cool tread function. And I've always been pretty much okay with that because, let's be honest, he spends most of his time as a huge friggin' arm. So, let's get him transformed up. We're going to start with um, the legs. Why not? All right, so we're gonna open up his toes real quick. Flip them around. Bring out his feet. This is very much like, um, like Bone Crusher as well. We're going to split these legs like so. And then we're going to separate this from the back. And then this is going to fold up and then stow away in that same place as the last one did. Let's go and do the arms real quick as well next. They are going to straighten out and then collapse in. Again, I know this seems familiar. The wrists are going to, do I just fold? Yeah, I'll just fold them straight in like that. And then we'll open this panel up and open this panel up. Bring this around and that tab is going to fit into that slot right there. And then this panel is going to come around that keeps on wanting to pop out. Let's try it again with the other one. That seems to work out a little bit better. So we're going to open that up, flip that in, bring out this panel here, tab that in. Open this, open that. And then we're going to open up these panels here.
and then these will come down you'll pop them out and then flip these guys in and this will come yeah, we'll pop that down this will come down like so this will slide in and then you'll close that up this panel will come down to the side and that'll help square all that up. So we'll do the same for the other side real quick. Pop that out. Flip that in. Bring that down. Bring that down. Bring this up and over. Now you've got this space in here. And that needs to be filled by all this chunk. So I believe if my memory serves me correctly, again, I haven't transformed this guy in <laughs> quite some time. I believe that just folds up like so and in like so. And then I think it just hangs out there because if it were to go up in there, it would stop this from rotating the way it should. Well, that's not quite right. Yeah. Nope, I had it right before. I have determined. Pretty certain that's how it's supposed to go, just like that. which all in all makes for a pretty good looking. Now, I think that you are supposed to be able to take these and tab them up into there. But uh, actually come to think of it, that's just an arm mode thing. Because this rotates. And I wouldn't be able to rotate if those tabs were in. So that's just an arm mode thing. You don't want it to rotate during arm mode. But yeah, there he is in his vehicle mode and uh again he's got this like really cool it's not like specifically earth mode look but it's like it definitely hits all the cues but it's got all these like surface greebles and whatnot that you wouldn't see on you know any sensible piece of equipment that's just so cool though
but yeah, in terms of articulation, of course, uh, it's uh, you know features in the vehicle mode. The treads do tread. It this part does rotate. You have articulation here at the shoulder of the shovel and at the elbow of the shovel and at the wrist of the shovel. And all in all, it's just really well made. It's big and chunky. The colors are great. The paint apps are great. Just like it's, it's a fantastic figure. And I love it so much. But yeah, that's it for my review of Unearth. And yeah, it's, it's awesome. If you haven't picked one up yet, honestly, honestly, I feel that Tor World has made the best Devastator. I know that um, other companies are making more like screen accurate Devastators and, you know, kudos to them, I guess, you know, but like... I think for a lot of people, this is the definitive Devastator, and uh, certainly my favorite. Though I also really do like the Hephaestus, but mm, mm, that just more has to go with my infatuation for Legend Scale figures. But anyhow, thanks everybody for watching. You guys are fantastic. Everybody stay awesome and be good to each other. See ya.